So yet again, it's another birthday in the computer world, another home computer, it's got its 30th birthday. So we had the Mac in 2014, we had the Atari ST in 2015. We probably should have done the Amiga in 2016, but we didn't. Um, and this year, it's the Acorn Archimedes. I've got to ask a, a question at this point, Dr. Bagley, because <laughs> this is a British computer, but why would anyone around the rest of the world know about this computer? They probably wouldn't know about the computer directly. Uh, they probably know a lot about the processor in it. So a couple of years ago, we did a video on the 30th anniversary of the processor. I think only half the 12 billion arms shipped in the last year went into mobile phones. Because this was the first computer ever to use the ARM CPU. The ARM CPU was developed because of this computer, right? It was developed to drive Acorn's next generation and this was what they developed. This is what came out of that development, yep. Let's find one still in its original box. Alright, so where are we going? This way. This is just like the uh, sun all over again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not quite going as far as that. We did have a comment asking what kind of lift it was actually, so uh, here we go. This it's is a serious cybernetics um, lift. Right, I did manage to get it to do weird things the other day, so... Um, it's a cone lift, there you go, for... Yeah. Um, person you wanted to know what lift it is. <laughs> right, we're going this way. And we're going to my secret hiding chamber. What's in here then? All my secrets. <laughs> A door that doesn't open. Oh. Another. Archimedes still in its original box. This is one I bought off eBay a couple of years ago, um, but what I was fascinated by is that it's actually still in its original box, but this is probably one of the earlier models of it, because when Acorn released the Archimedes in 87, there were four different versions released. I think one of them never actually left the market, but there was the A300 series and the A400 series. The 400 series was a professional model, and could come with one meg of RAM or four meg of RAM and a hard disk if you wanted it. The A300 was aimed at the home user or schools and came with either 512 kilobytes of RAM or one meg of RAM. So that's the 305. But there are other machines in the range. The Archimedes 310 is also a BBC Micro. When I got this one off eBay, it was advertised as a, a one meg machine. But I realised looking at the box and the serial number on the bottom, that it had originally been a 512k machine, which had then been upgraded at home, made 1987 in the UK. We won't use this one, we'll go and use the one upstairs because it actually works a bit better. This one's uh, got an earlier version of the operating system on. We'll go and have a chat about what this machine did and why it was, was certainly in the UK very, very popular. In the UK, anyone of a certain age will be very familiar with these because they were bought by pretty much most schools in the UK, so everyone sort of used them as a kid. The interesting thing about the Archimedes line is it continued the tradition of being a BBC Micro. Certainly the A310 and the A305 did, so they had the red function keys, which was sort of the staple thing. They were also used by the BBC on screen as well, so lots of TV shows, Doctor Who and other prime time shows. If they needed a computer, it would often be an Acorn computer, perhaps rebadged with some fictional brand and so on, um, that appeared on there doing whatever it was needed to do. But they were also used behind the scenes, often linked up to external software to generate the graphics using lots of prime time shows. When kids would phone in, play the little on screen games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you phone up, you said left, 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 That's left, it. Yeah. right, jumps. Right. So all of those were actually done using the Acorn Archimedes computers. We talked about it being on telly, but actually, the thing you have to remember about this when it came out, this machine was incredible for the time. At the time it came out, it was a home computer, it sold for less than a thousand pounds and it gave you four MIPS, four million instructions per second worth of computing power. That's roughly the same amount of computing power that you could get in something like probably the Sun workstation that we looked at in the previous video. So that's Sun 3160, which is pretty top of the line for 86, was probably about the same sort of power as you suddenly got in a home computer. And actually at that same time, Sun introduced their Spark CPU and we're starting to move to RISC-based architecture. So the nice thing about this is it's a RISC machine when it was originally released, it had an operating system called Arthur, don't ask why, um, no one really knows, that basically was very similar to what was on the BBC Micro, except that it did support Windows, mice and so on, so it's got the sort of same sort of user interface. 
It wasn't really used for at all on the original release. That came with the later version, which was renamed to Risk OS, which you can still get today and install on your Raspberry Pi. So the operating system is still available. Um, and it generally worked. It had multitasking, cooperative rather than preemptive. So if one program was sort of carried away doing something and didn't relieve control to everything else, then you sort of had to wait for it to finish. But it all booted up out of ROM, so they turned on and off very, very quickly, and you could get started within seconds. So RISCOS 2 came along about 89 with sort of some of the later versions of the machine, and it continued. And you could upgrade it. So this machine's had the RAM upgraded to 4 meg. It's got an ARM3 card in. It's got Acorns, local area networking in there and things, and a SCSI card, which gives it some nice big hardware. So yeah, it was a really nice machine for its time. You could also get a version that ran Unix, so Acorn ported Unix to it, not Linux. That hadn't been written yet, but proper Unix to run on this machines. And so you had actually quite a powerful set of machines that were released at that point. Certainly with the ARM3 chip, they're as powerful as many other Unix workstations at the time, if not more so. Of course, technology marched on, and so they produced later versions, so you got sort of less interesting looking versions with the A5000, which Alex used to do a few videos years ago. The design of these is quite nice. This one's got two drives, I like it. Um, and then, of course, you've got later machines, which Sean is very familiar with, which was, of course, the RISC PC. This was the sort of the, the end of the line for the Archimedes range. It lost the Archimedes badge and looked a bit like a PlayStation 2 before the PlayStation 2 at that point. In fact, all computers started to look like this because Atari had a prototype that had this sort of wedge shape effect. But yeah, this is the one that, um, well, I should let Sean talk about what this one really got used for. All right, let's hold the camera for a sec. I shall give you a quick. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about these? It keeps trapping me into being on the wrong side of the camera. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one of my first jobs and one of the reasons I got so heavily into computing is I used to help install this kind of machine at, um, at television stations. So I used to go around the world installing them in places like Moscow, um, Johannesburg, uh, Seattle, you name it, I've been there and often put one of these machines in. So this is a, a version of what the company I work for used to sell and what we used to love about them was they were toolless, so you could get into them very quickly and easily and they were pretty much instant on, a bit like Steve just mentioned that the OS was in ROM which meant they didn't have to wait for a hard disk to spin up to load in the operating system, they just kind of turned on and worked. So, right. I've forgotten how to put it back on, so let's leave it for a minute. Steve can yeah. uh, show you inside and, and talk about it a bit more technically. But we used to use them for on-air uh, television automation. So very, very kind of time-critical uh, application, and you, wanted, you needed confidence from the people operating them. So these things, fantastic for that. Um, it, the system's moved through to using Windows and Macs and all sorts of stuff since then. But certainly in mid to late 90s, early 2000s, and even now some of these are still in operation transmitting television programs. I'm not sure I could name any because I haven't worked in that area for a while. <laughs> One of the interesting things that you initially notice about this is that when you run an application, um, let's run the drawing application, which everyone kid used to, so is you get what is effectively equivalent to the dock that's in um, OS X or the start menu that is in uh, Windows from 95 onwards. So the folklore goes is that someone went from working with Acorn machines like this to Microsoft and took his Acorn with him and apparently was seen and they decided that's where the Windows 95 start menu was going to come from, the sort of bar cross bump, whether I believe that or not, but that's certainly how the folklore goes. So you end up with the icons down here and you could then Sort of and it often, certainly by risk or 3 it came with the applications built into ROM and so you could load them up very, very quickly. And so you could start to draw pretty pictures. You had Bezier splines in there. So again, from 1987, this is the original welcome disk. And perhaps the thing that the ARM Archimedes, when it was first released, was most famous for was a demonstration or a game that was on the actual welcome disk. And it was actually released as a full game. So hopefully this will run. Ah. <laughs> so this is what happens when you try and run 1987 software on a machine operating system from 1993. Even then it was out of date. So let's find a slightly later version of the welcome disk. we we'll use the other drive. That's just showing off two floppy drives. Oh, absolutely. Oops, and that disk doesn't work. 
Um, somewhere I've got, there we are, another copy of Application of Disc 2. The copy of Application of Disc 1. There we are, a backup copy. So sometimes your floppies would die, so you often would make backup copies. Um, let's try this one. Sounds more helpful. And so there was this game called Lander, which became the full game Zarch. And when this game was released, it was sort of full 3D graphics, which was not really seen like this. And the idea was that you had to sort of fly the spaceship around the... Um, so this was just a demonstration, and I was never any good at it. I remember being blown away by this. Yeah, I think everyone was when it came out. Uh, so this was a sort of the demo again. You've got the 87 thing there, written by David Brabant of Elite fame, who then went on to be involved with the creation of the Raspberry Pi. This originally came out, and everyone said, no, you couldn't do this on anything but the Akon Archimedes because you need the power. It was later ported as the game Virus to the ST and the Amiga. And then, in a true bizarre turn of fate, someone actually ported it to run on the ZX Spectrum on an 8-bit machine with a 4 megahertz processor. So perhaps they were everything. But certainly the, the Acorn version on the Archimedes was the smoothest. The control system was controlled by the mouse and it's incredibly sensitive. So even on the launch pad, if you're not careful, you can blow things up and you can sort of explore because you've got some interesting sort of clipping issues there as the house sort of falls through the landscape and so on. Has that been, uh, is that available online, do you know that? Um, there's definitely claims of it about, I'm sure if you look in the right places you could find copies of the discs and an ARM emulator, an Archimedes emulator to run it on. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit like the old Moonlander game you used to get, but... Um... No. Game over. And so there were no more computer files as Sean's too busy uh, playing games on the Archimedes. <laughs> <laughs>